Hi, today is September 25th, 2011. My name is James Leone, and uh, if it kills me, I'm going to end up uh, sharing my findings for the, what's now called Johnson Cemetery over at Find a Death in McCracken County, USA. Um, as a number, there are, let's see, 43 to 45 individuals there, if I'm right. Um, buried at that cemetery, and I'm going to go through the list of people one by one of what my findings of fact are and what my either final solid conclusion is or what my um, belief is that isn't solid, and I'll tell you what information I lack to, that would allow me to make a final determination. Also, um, I'm doing this despite the fact that there is a book that has been microfilmed and is at the uh, Family History Center, the Mormons have, you can just go to one of their local family history centers and get it, but it doesn't mean the list is complete or accurate. And so I hope that between the work that I do and the work that um, Yuri Pearl Wilford Neal has done in, her, in the transcriptions that she's, that she's done so far and has placed at the Family History Library that's available at microfilm, uh, item 321358, uh, between the two of us, any answer anybody would have about a genealogical mystery that lies in this cemetery can be answered. And what the mystery is as such, there are about half of the graves, I would say, there have a quarter of the grave records have no dates, um, and then another quarter just have years. Uh, the connections aren't clearly drawn between individuals just by the face of the gravestones. And it takes a tremendous amount of work that I've done to get this all sorted out as well as I have. But still, I've only been able to identify one individual that I know is one of the one, two, three, f one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I preliminarily identified two of six unmarked graves, um, or non-descriptive graves. I actually, a sister shepherd and uh, unknown infant, and uh, and Josephine Lofton Harper, you know, may uh, be one of the unknown unknowns that are a part of there. I've also come up with exact is as exact of a birth and death date that I can, and I try to draw the connections between these individuals and their families. And to do a quick rundown, uh, just uh, what I know is that Thomas Shepard, in eight, just before 1840, in 1839, bought a piece of land from another purchaser that made his purchase in 1829, and according to the, the mapping they have over there at the Kentucky Secretary of State, uh, this purchase was made um, east of Paducah, but from what I could tell, the this cemetery is west of Paducah. It seems to me that uh, it, by means of being a member of this family and a descendant of, of any of the shepherd daughters, or, yeah, just any of the shepherd daughters, um, that's the means by which these individuals have a right to be buried at this at this yard, and I found a connection between everybody that's clearly named. Um, I was hoping to identify all four of the unmarked graves, but there's a scope limitation as to what I can get. So there are, in Kentucky, as far as death records are concerned, there are handwritten death records and registers that go to about 1911. Then uh, there's a gap also of death records where just none exist probably between 1902 and 1907. Uh, then after, and that's in McCracken County, and then after, uh, between 1911 and around 1955, original death certificates uh, with places to put the names of parents <laughs> and where the individuals interned and what their age is, day they were born and day they were died is, died is provided, but not in all cases does that happen. But in most cases it does, and in most of the cases, that's the way you get the birth record for a lot of these dead people because the birth records are just incomplete or very sloppily done. The, uh, the transcription is of good quality, but 
there are so many gaps in the record and marriages and other things like that, you just can't rely on what you're going to be able to get out of this. You really have to struggle to get to this. So anyway, so the, at the Kentucky Secretary, is the Secretary of State? I don't know who the hell this is. I'm, a, I'm in a bad mood. Okay, so anyway, I'm getting this. Okay, so at Ancestry.com, there's a database that incorporates the contents of books called the Kentucky Land Grants. And uh, you can search for your ancestor, and you get a nondescript piece of information that basically tells you where they got the land grant, but not the year in which they got it, which is not very helpful. But you can use this information to go to the dun, 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 Kentucky Land Office website. At the Kentucky Land Office website, you can put in what the quarter section, location, section number, township, range, and east and west that comes from. this book here <laughs> and once you have that information from this book so you got quarter section 26 which goes into that box there and your township so many papers so little time and uh, township is the T there, the T6. So you put the 6 in the township in the range. You put the 2, then you put the east there. And it comes up as only one result, and that is a purchase by Thomas Shepard, February 28, 1839, from a Jonas Mullins for $20 for 160 acres. Of course, $20 back then is a lot more than it was now. Get out of here, kid, you bother me. Then, in the 1840 census, suddenly a Thomas Shepard miraculously appears in McCracken County with all the, and every age range, every person of an age range indicated, uh, appears in the right time based on the birth dates that I've known, and everything's good. So he's in the right place. That's him. That's his Glenn Grant. These are his documents. The first document says, uh, Thomas, um, Stevens Shepherd. So that's where they get that at Ancestry. It's got 180 acres. It was originally bought by Jonas Mullins in 1829, but was endorsed on the back like a check over to Thomas Shepherd in 1840, if you can see that. So they appear. And what ends up happening in the old Shepherd household over these number of years is that no one we're familiar with lives next to them in 18. 50, but by 1860, suddenly a Wallace shows up after he marries his daughter. He magically gets some land. And then the Harpers show up and they get some land because they happen to marry another daughter. Pretty soon we get to figure out that Thomas Shepard is going to divide his land evenly between all of his daughters by virtue of their marriage to other people. That would include Obadiah Johnson, who I am most interested in. Trying to stay excited, trying to go fast, because the last time I did this, it took me an hour and I lost it. Uh, I lost it. <laughs> Ran out of disk space because I got so much stuff on my hard disk. And it's a pretty big disk, too. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up going through the list of individuals that are interned there that appear at Find a Grave and in the order in which they appear, and I'm going to tell you what happened. Or I'm going to tell you what I think happened and what I need, would need to know to know whether that is true or not or if I'm full of bunk. And I could be full of bunk or it may be true. But I'm going to tell you what I think happened. Okay, so here we are. We got an Annie Jo Alexander. No, I believe it to be husband and wife, Lori Annie Amy Johnson, February 1879 through 23rd June 1858. You can read. I'm not reading it. That's their birth dates, and they got married, and what ended up happening is Lori decided to call herself Amy in 1900 when she married Joe Alexander, and they lived in the household with their parents. He was termed son-in-law, given that birth date of 1875. She had February 1879, and then the Kentucky Death Index has her same birth year, and Mr. Joe Alexander's... World War I draft card is the same birth year, 1930 and to 1910 census in which they lived together and not in the household, remain consistent for years. We are talking about the same people, folks. All the things match. Bada bing. There you go. There's World Drive. I'm not, not lying. So there it is. Draft card. 
Okay, so what does that mean? I rushed through it. I don't know. It doesn't make sense anymore. Basically, what it means is, is that this is not Annie Joe, this is Annie and Joe. And Joe. <laughs> Anyway, so here it is. There are two people, not one, and what happened is I miscommunicated when I reported this. Miscommunicated. And I said that this was just the wife and not the husband or something or other. I didn't get the message across right. Of course, that was at 4 o'clock in the morning, and hopefully at 2 o'clock in the morning now I'll be able to get the message across. The next grave I thought I had solved, I might have solved, but... The evidence is against me, and the evidence that's against me is the 1910 census when Mrs. Alexander says she had two children, both of which are living, instead of two children of four, two dead children out of four born, or two living out of four born children. This seems to be almost a little bit, no, uh, it's taunting. Uh, it looks like it may be a Joe and an Ed. They look like they may be two children that may be buried there. Problem is, I can't associate any death record. I get my greasy mitts upon to find out who it is, but i that's my belief. And I believe it happened between 1902 and 1907 when, the, when Kentucky McCracken County magically has lost its death records at Ancestry.com. It also could be uh, their son, Edward, who was born September 25th, 1905, and died in January 1973. Again, death certificate 1973, can't get my greasy mitts on it, can't tell you if he's there. He also could be in, a, he also could be in, a, in an unmarked grave. Proof for the, you don't need proof for a guy that we don't need uh, labels, so we're gonna move on. Johnny Alexander, I do have information about, a little bit better. Uh, this Johnny, again, was the child of Amy Laurie Annie, whatever she wanted to call herself that year, um, uh, and John and Joe Alexander, there, there he is, and uh, I believe the date to be August 1909, to 29 May 1910, because I said so. No, not because I said so. Because of this death register here, that they, and saying he was nine months old. Why am I doing that? It's too blurry, and by the time I get out, it'll be, an Ill, it'll be illegible. But that's what it is. It comes from Ancestry's Kentucky Death Records. Look for Jinu F. Alexander. So we know that's John, but the transcriber didn't. These are highly paid volunteers. Again, next is Myrtle Alexander, who was born. This is this is a solution that I haven't seen yet. Uh, she's born Myrtle Rust, uh, born 22nd September 1924. You can read. There you go. There's your details, and here's the findings of fact. And you push pause if you want more information. I want to go fast. I want to go home. And that's where they married. And here is our affidavit. Uh, basically, this is a marriage license. That says yes, they got permission from us good parents to marry. That's in Missouri, and I don't know why the hell they got married in Missouri, but they did, and that's that. Here's a note from Myrtle Russ's mother saying it's good and fine to marry Mr. James Alexander. And here's her death record. So you could know I'm giving you the right dates for her gravestone to put find find to death, and I'm going to skip going through the census. Because why? Because I'm, I'm tired. Okay, it's not your fault. Anyway, so here I believe this next one, Rhoda Shepherd Bean, to be Rhoda Shepherd, daughter of um, Tom Shepherd, Mary Polly Jones. And you can read, finds the back. Uh, she's in Thomas Shepherd's household, marries John Bean. I got a marriage record. He died 2nd December 1910. Don't know if he's buried in the yard. If he is, it's an unmarked grave. Second candidate. Here's the merge record. That should be readable. Yes. Okay. Here, I gotta move fast. I don't want to just run out of disk space either. Here's their daughter for good measure, but we don't have time for good measure, so we're moving. And we don't have
enough time for his death record because he is not interred there. Or I don't have any way to tell because it's just a scribble thing. I could read the, if I take a magnify, I could, but there's no indication of what cemetery. Moving on, next one. Here's Tulema Delise. Tulema Delise, I'll just tell you right now, has something to do with someone that is living, and so I'm not going to go into any details, but I know she is related to. Nancy Hopkins, that was her birth name. Next, Marianne Garvey. Marianne was the daughter of Thomas Wallace, who married a George Garvey, and they only appeared one census together. That's her birth and death dates. Her, she was born Marianne Wallace. It's Marianne Wallace Garvey. And here is her death record with Thomas Jones Wallace, Margaret L. Shepard as parents. Death certificate, we're calling it a Johnson Cemetery in this case, but that'll be a rarity, and you'll find that out. Census living together. Moving on. Here's Sally Shepard. And Sally Shepard was a daughter of Thomas Shepard and the same wife I've mentioned a million times, Mary Polly Jones. And this is what I believe her vital dates to be. And she married a Blaney Harper. How do I get that? Well, there's the marriage record. Kraken County, 21 November 1867. Here's her death certificate, transcription, Tom Shepard, Polly Jane, Jones. I thought you said James slapped me because it's not, it's Jones. And they believe they are in a Harper Cemetery in this case, but this is her death certificate it got from Ancestry.com. Transcription reflects it accurately. Moving on, there's her, there's them living together. There's her son. Doesn't matter if he's, the son was not buried and he's eliminated uh, at the Shepherd Cemetery. He was buried at Mount Clinton. Next, baby Johnson. I haven't found anything about it. Not enough information to go on. If you can get those little identifier plats to come off and you can read the contents of the documents inside, please do so, because I've done a lot of work, but there's a few I can't do. Carl Johnson, I was able to identify. He's the son of Ollie James, grandson of Joel Anderson Johnson, uh, and great-grandson of Obadiah Johnson, and there's his birth dates, information I got from the death certificate, his middle name is Edward, actually. So do change that label, because I forgot to pencil that in. There is birth date, 6 November 1935, 25th September 1934. Ollie Johnson, Beatrice Hopkins, parents. Moving on. Claude Johnson, two years old. Um, I can't find the original record that I had before, but it was 11 May 1902. It's not really a big deal. Cory Johnson was actually born Cordy Diedrich. I got that from a 19 census. All the other facts are good, except for Ed's name was Edward, his middle name D, but we'll get to that. Here's her death day. Here you have that. That just proves we're talking about the same person. Here she is living in the 1920 census household with Louisa Diedrich and George Diedrich, Lisa Diedrich being her mother-in-law or actually the head household's mother-in-law. 1920 under Cordy Johnson at Hausman Graves County, Kentucky. More on Cordy. Okay, here's Edward. He's, this Edward is the son of Obadiah Johnson and Nancy Shepard. He lives with them in the 1900, 1870, and 1880 census. And I've already gone over the other facts. It's Full name is Edward D. And the other fact I will give you is that either his uh, death record that's provided by the Kentucky De Death Index is 10 years wrong, or his gravestone is wrong, or there isn't one for him. And the only death record that exists is his gravestone itself. Next individual is Fanny Lewis, who married Obadiah Johnson. And uh, that's what she was born at. I know that personally, but here's her birth dates, 20 March 1884 to 19 August 1975. She remarried an Artie Lindsay. So and here's her uh, Illinois marriage to a Joe, Joe, Joseph, Anderson, Johnson. And these names keep switching like they're going out of style, but the same people. Fanny Lindsay, that's her death date, birth date. Ties up with the census record. They don't trust me too bad. 
It's true. Artie is the second husband. He's not buried there, so he's not really germane to this conversation. I know that Fannie Lewis's parents are Monroe Lewis and Anna Starnes. Um, I can't, I don't have the benefit of seeing her death certificate. G. Emmett Johnson's full name is George Emmett Johnson. And all the other facts are backed up by his death certificate. We already know his death date, and he is the son of Obadiah Johnson and Nancy Allen Shepard. These all come from Find a Grave, so I didn't take these pictures. Um, death certificate for George Emmett reinforces the gravestone, tells you it's not just G, it is George. Change it. Here's a nice picture that I talked about before, but I'm just way too tired to do that. James Henry Johnson, instead of just Henry Johnson, and it is 16 May 1864 through January 1949, and all the facts revealed by his death certificate, there it is, James Henry Johnson. Same days. Next one is Joe Joel Joseph Anderson. And he's Joel in the 1900 and 1880 census, Joseph in the 1920 census. And he lives with his parents in 1880 and 1900. Son of Obadiah Johnson, Nancy Shepard. He's along the line that I am studying. And there's his full name, backed up, dates backed up by a death certificate and subtraction, because I don't know why it's so ununiform. Lola Johnson was actually born Lola. Candrus Johnson. We already got the dates and facts are reinforced by our death certificate. As you can see there, that's a transcription of it that's readable. By the way, most of these death certificates are saying Sh Shepherd Cemetery, some are saying Wallace Cemetery, some say McNeil Cemetery. By the way, that's a picture of little Candace. Nancy Ellen. Shepard Johnson, she married Ob Obadiah Johnson, not just Obaya. Here is full birth dates enforced by the death certificate. Shepherd Cemetery. Here's your marriage record. Obadiah, man, you can see there. Obadiah. He goes by in all of his different records. O. Johnson, Ob Obadiah, Obadiah, Obadiah. <laughs> and I'm not going to have time to explain how I figured out that his parents really were Robert Johnson and Lucindia Unknown. Um, except that all the other Obadiahs are eliminated by other factors. I'll do another presentation. Here's his death certificate with the with the unreadable everything else, but it does say that he's buried in the shepherd's graveyard, which is repeated tons of times. Otha Johnson's covered, Russell Lynn's covered sufficiently, William Roy's covered sufficiently. James Lee Lofton is fine. Here's his exact dates if you care. And he that explains his connection, husband to Roberta Wallace, daughter from Lavinia Shepherd. Reinforced by the death certificate transcribed here. And we're being buried in the Shepherd Cemetery. Roberta is born Roberta Wallace. There's your exact dates. Back established by a death certificate here. And she's been buried in the Wallace Cemetery now. It's a lot of different cemeteries for one place. Here's Allie McNeil, not Allie McBeal. And that's a guy. Yeah, Henry Bud, Allie McBeal. There it is. And there's a story about him at Ancestry that I read before, but I won't bother now because I'm just too damn tired. And I'll run out of space. Randall Nichols is a later generation, but he is a descendant through um, the same person that is an ancestor of Talima DeWeese that I mentioned. But his exact birth date is May 1989 through 30 November 1961.
Next, there's this Social Security Death Index record. Push pause, push pause. I'm going fast. Um, there's his Kentucky Birth Index. Yeah, okay, Thelma Sanderson is the only daughter of Elizabeth that was. Daughter of Thomas Shepard, Polly Jones, that is the only aunt, only descendant of Elizabeth that's buried in this yard, and that's unless the graves are unmarked. 1909 through August 1910, faxed out by the death record, which is the scribbly crap which you're not going to be able to read, so I'm not going to waste your time or mine. They're, there they are living together in the 1920 census. I've got documentation. Uh, Laura Shepard. Born 1850s, best I know. All I have is a census record, and she died sometime after the 1870 census was taken. Died single, apparently. She's a daughter of Thomas Shepard, Mary Polly Jones. Sister Shepard, I assumed, is the eldest sister Mary. So I've given her 1833 through between 1850 and 1860 when she disappears. Uh, but wait, there's more. Infant unknown. I can't do anything about. Don't have enough information. But you see that little box there? See that? There's, there's writing in there. <laughs> this is taking me ten hours. So maybe you might want to peel that thing off and find out what it says. Same with this unknown here. You might want to do that. I know that one of these is going to be Josephine Lofton Harper. This one could be her. The reason why is because it says that she was buried at the Harper Cemetery. Here's another one. Get Peel that thing off. Get permission from somebody or ask them to get the information. Here's Josephine Lofton Harper. And where we live in? Serbia? I don't know. Uh, here is, um, let's get some labels on these things so they, they won't be forgotten. Here is her death record, but that's not the important part. The important part is she's buried in Harper Cemetery, as in another record says Harper Cemetery, yes. Same place. And just going to walk in. Jones Wallace is Thomas Jones Wallace, born November or man, November 1828 or 30, depending on what record you believe, and died 7 March 1917 when they only estimated his age. They only got that. They did give him a number of years as 56, but uh, other records have him as being born in 1828, so go figure. Lavinia Shepard Wallace is self-explanatory, except for the fact that we should identify, I'm going to identify her as the daughter of Thomas Shepard and Mary Polly Jones. Want a better look at that? Go to find a grave. That's what they're for. There's a marriage record between Alvina. Now the thing is, she kept changing her name. She started out as Margaret, then Lavina, then Alvina. So you get them all. That's her. Molly Wallace was the daughter of Thomas Jones Wallace and Margaret Lavina Shepard. Death certificate reinforces these facts that I present right there. And they're calling it a Shepherd Cemetery once again. Saul Wallace is the brother of Thomas Jones Wallace. Those are his dates. Of course, by death certificate. And if I lose this now, I'm going to be really pissed. Here's the um, McNeil Cemetery they're seeing now for Saul Wallace. <laughs> and cemetery records. Tommy Wallace. Uh, there are two of them. I only know that one of them was living as a son of Thomas Wallace and Lavinia Shepard, born April 1876 and disappeared after April 1910 with the records that I have. So Tommy and Thomas J, between the two of them, I can't do anything. Willie uh, shows up April 1879 according to the 1900 census. And Miss Willie Wallace is apparently the wife of this person, but I've yet to do it. I'm going to stop, and those are my explanations. I'm going home, I'm going to bed.